First of all, I have to begin with my standard introduction. I'm incurably Hungarian, and those who are not yet conditioned to my language may have very serious difficulties. But I hope you will survive, and you will have the chance to get something out what I shall try to say. This is a sentence with uh, which George Kepes uh, usually started all of his public lectures. For somebody like me, who also comes from Hungary, I think it is more than accurate to launch a talk with this quote. The title of my lecture is Ars Combinatorica. I took this term from an essay of the German art historian Werner Hoffmann, who coined it, uh, referring to a text by, fa by the famous British art critic, Kenneth Clark. Clark's text, uh, text was published in an exhibition catalog in 1967, entitled Klex und Diagram, or in English, Blot and Diagram. On the cover of the catalog, uh, there is an illustration by the Dutch artist, William Sandberg. Um, and by using uh, this visual analogy, Clark was trying to point out the two anomalies of the artist's tendency in creating art. According to his view, uh, the history of art was always pondering to find the right balance between these two entities, either the violent, uncontrollable pattern of abstraction, or the rigid, sober geometrical form. Kepesh's art is about uh, these uh, dualities, the digital or the binary code, so to speak. He was a painter, but in the same time a photographer, an artist, but simultaneously a theoretician. His art represents a sort of structure which is able to visually and conceptually link uh, these uh, dualities. He was seeking to find the balance and the order of not just in his images, but in the world around us. His most often used uh, word in his writing is entropy, the stance, the stance between order and disorder. Uh, as you can see in one of his uh, photograms uh, entitled Balance. Structure for him, as seen in uh, one of his other uh, photographs, which is uh, in the collection of the uh, LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. So the structure was the way, of, uh, way out from the chaos, from the current state of uh, civilization which we are uh, living in. He saw in vision an all-encompassing quality which could be function uh, as a certain survival kit for the mankind. That is the reason why he tried to collect the fun fundamental forms of the vision, like the means of the composition, the multiple forces and organization processes between the elements in the surface uh, or the plane of the picture. His first book, uh, published in 1944, entitled Language of Vision, um, in which he wanted to rewrite uh, in three years under the title Education of Vision. Uh, this is the inside cover of uh, his uh, 1944 book, Language of uh, Vision, uh, where we can see the same elements uh, like uh, this uh, abstract uh, structure here. It is uh, like, uh, he called it light drawing, so he, he did it uh, uh, with using the uh, flashlight uh, to create this kind of uh, liberal form. Uh, so the same tendency, like uh, the, uh, the the blot and the diagram. The, uh, here, the diagram represents the Bauhaus education, uh, like these geometrical forms: the triangle, uh, the circle, and the square is the representation of the Bauhaus ed education. 
um, the education uh, which Kepesh was the last representative of. Uh, I will refer to my lecture that he was the co-founder of the so-called New Bauhaus in Chicago, with, which was uh, founded in 1937 uh, by Kepesh and uh, his uh, co-patriot László Moholinagy. Um, but my instinct uh, is, uh, however, that many of you haven't been encountered with Kepesh's name. Indeed, uh, he's still an unknown figure in the art of the, uh, of the 20th century. This is, uh, was not always so. He, as a visual artist, at least in his lifetime, became as a certain reference point at a technical university, or to be more precise, probably the most uh, well-known technical university on the planet, the MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge. George Kepesh is so far the only person in the history of uh, the School of Architecture uh, and Planning at the MIT to be elevated to the rank of institute professor, one of uh, a group of 51 scholars over the past half uh, of a century. Also, he is the only one from the faculty to have given the MIT's prestigious annual so-called Car Taylor Compton Lecture. When Kepesh arrived in Cambridge on the 1st uh, March of 1946, he not only brought fine art to his very place, but shortly after his appointment, he established the MIT Society of Liberal Arts as the first community to discuss modern art at MIT. He soon became a ma major figure in teaching visual knowledge here uh, at MIT, also partly at Harvard, and he was celebrated as such. As we all know, he, uh, in 1967, he founded the Central of Advanced Visual Studies, the CAVS, which was uh, at that time of its creation the only institution of its kind in the world. As a matter of fact, the model of the new center was the Institute of Advanced Studies in Princeton, where, for example, the famous art historian Erwin Panofsky taught. And probably uh, that's why its name received some serious criticism from early on. Quote, since it implies that the subject of research is the uh, psychology of perception, which is not the case, unquote. Apparently, the question of changing CIVS name came up almost every year, and it was just recently solved by its new director, Ute Metabauer, who was, uh, who was a famous uh, German art uh, critic, uh, the co-curator of the previous documento in Kassel. Um, the, the center uh, founded by Kepesh bears the name now ACT, like ACT is like, a, uh, I think, a very nice acronym because it, uh, it's kind of uh, have uh, uh, in, its, in its name uh, also the verb to act. Uh, and it's an abbreviation of uh, MIT Program of Art, Culture and Technology. The basic idea of the intersection of art, science and technology, as well as the necessity of a place where this can be uh, practiced, was already formulated in the 1960 uh, special issue of Daedalus, uh, uh, the Journal of American Academy of Art and Sciences, guest edited by Kepesh, but was precisely first outlined in Kepesh's text published in 1965, uh, two years before the center's birth in the journal Architectural Record. By following this guide, most universities developed programs, at uh, least with the hope, they can integrate arts training into, uh, into the engineering uh, curriculum. To some extent, Kepesh's dream could have been fulfilled years or decades before. However, when Kepesh is arrived at MIT, uh, this is a nice picture from the same faculty, uh, Kepesh is taught from the School of Architecture and Planning. 
Uh, this person in the middle is uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, who also uh, uh, was taught there as a, as a guest professor every so often. Um, so when Kepesh has arrived at MIT, the most uh, brilliant scientists he found uh, there were completely innocent and blind about art. But what he encountered here was still seminal to his ideas, and he uh, gradually became interested in finding links between the two systems of discourse, or uh, the two cultures, as uh, C.P. Snow defined uh, them not too much later. And Kepesh uh, chose the role of the images, uh, the image, the pattern as the visual as entity, as a starting point. As early as 1951, he organized uh, the exhibition The New Landscape, The New Landscape in Art and Sciences, which um, he uh, brought uh, this idea further and he published uh, his book under uh, this title. This exhibition was at the Hayden Gallery, the, MI, uh, the, the gallery of, of the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology which was also the predecessor of uh, Richard Hamilton. Uh, Richard Hamilton, as we know, was the, one of the most famous pop artists uh, in, in Britain. Uh, Richard Hamilton uh, produced a show with uh, the title Growth and Form uh, in the same year when Capuchis did uh, his exhibition at MIT at the A uh, ICA, the Institute of Contemporary Art in, in London. In 1956, when the content of uh, this show was published in the form of, uh, of a book, and Kepesh's exhibition was invited to uh, Japan as well. Uh, he, started to, he started interdisciplinary seminars with scientists like uh, Norbert Wiener. Norbert Wiener coined the term uh, cybernet, cybernet, uh, cybernetic uh, knowledge. Uh, Gerald Holton or uh, Rudolf Arnheim. Rudolf Arnheim was the, uh, one of the most important figures of the Gestalt uh, theory. And the materials of these seminars served, uh, served as a basis for seven uh, volumes Kepesh edited during the 60s entitled Vision and, and Value. The Vision and Value was, uh, 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 was published by the George Brazel uh, um, Printing House. George Blazer uh, was a seminal figure uh, publishing modern art in the United States uh, during the 60s. Uh, I met him f a few years ago. He's still alive. He's 90 something in New York, and he is now dedicating uh, one of uh, the last volume, last remaining uh, volume, uh, the handmade object from this series, uh, Vision and, and Value. So this series, The Vision and Value, was framed around a looming social problem and written by the most important scholars from almost every field of science in the period. And it's still a very uh, fundamental source book. But who was uh, George Kepesh? What made him so accepted that he was uh, able to create such an outstanding network? A whimsical professor, a legendary womanizer, before uh, his marriage to the British artist uh, Juliet Appleby uh, on, the, on the left side. Actually, um, a painter by origin uh, who in his early 20s played an important role in the socialist uh, movement in his homeland, homeland uh, Hungary. His uncle, Ferenc Kepes, was the head of the anarchist movement in the beginning of the 20th century in Hungary. Being a utopian communist, communist Kepesh became later uh, a victim of the McCartney era, but he was already teaching at MIT. Probably uh, that's the reason why he never talked about his past. But he went from uh, being a queer fish who was walking around uh, with his camera along the long corridors of MIT and referring to the new technological discoveries as certain art forms to suddenly becoming a very well-known and respected figure within the uh, MIT community and beyond. 
as his uh, character sec secured him a place in the pop popular culture of the United States as well. In his book series, uh, started in the 1970s, the well-known American novelist Philip Roth chose Kepesh's animated life to create a fictional professor as the main character of his writings. Now, um, I will screen for you a few seconds uh, of, uh, of some outtakes from a res recent, I mean, not very recent, it was uh, produced in uh, 2006. Uh, the film Elegy, which uh, based on Rhodes' uh, books, uh, starring Ben Kingsley and Penelope Cruz. No, don't take notes because honestly it's not worth it. It really don't don't give it a thought. The work of art reminds you of who you are now. Professor Kevish, uh, we saw you on TV last night. You great. Well thank you. Charlie Rose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the loss is It depends on who's observing, right, Professor Kevish? Okay. Westerner seems like the table is to You always work in that way. Mainly. Mm -hmm. I like the theatricality. Is that how you see the world? Black or white? No. Kepesh himself uh, had never been a film actor nor a movie director, but when he learned photography as a youngster in the end of the 20s, um, as a matter of fact, Robert Kappa's first camera was a gift by Kepesh. His handsome face was often used in various product designs, and uh, he also trained himself a graphic designer. We should also note that after he left the academy, he wanted to be a filmmaker and gave up painting. We shall recall some of the early studies for an animated film uh, against the Nazi regime, and also his remarkable opportunity to be one of the first artists who could test the first use usable color film stock, which was uh, developed that time in Berlin, where he emigrated to in 1930. Also, Kepesh was the German interpreter of the Russian avant-garde filmmaker Alexander Dovchenko when he visited Germany. And Kepesh designed Rudolf Arnheim's famous book, Film as Art, two years later, in 1932. The experimental film, Ein Lichtspiel schwarz-weiß grau, still, uh, still attributed to, only to Laszlo Moholy-Nagy, um, Kepesh's compatriot and uh, colleague in Berlin, but was actually their co-joint piece. After Kepesh and Moholy left Germany due to the Nazi takeover, they were wor working together on the special film effects of the movie based on the H.G. Wells book, Adaptation uh, Things to Come. And a still uh, from one of uh, its uh, discredited footages was used in the following year to introduce uh, the first school in the United States, which engaged uh, in the relationship between teaching and uh, industry in order to establish a school which had a, a social mission carried uh, out through design. The new Bauhaus in Chicago, which uh, adopted uh, this set of ideas, was founded by Laszlo Moholy-Nagy in 1937, and Kepesh was hired, to, uh, hired by him to be part of the faculty. Kepesh, uh, being the head uh, of the color and light workshop, encouraged students to investigate the intellectual and social dimensions of photography. At this time, uh, he mainly used the technique of the photogram, which he saw as a certain transition between painting and photography. These images are photogenic images, Kepesh said uh, in his recollections. They are produced by light, and if I'm lucky, they, are, they are also generate light. 
he said. From this uh, period on, uh, the utilization of light as a tool of uh, communi communication, a new unity of space organization became a major topic of Kapesch's exploration. In 1960, he received the Guggenheim uh, grant to study light as a, crea as, as a creative medium, and he organized a major exhibition on the topic at the Carpenter Center uh, for Visual Arts, which, is, uh, the, which was established as the gallery of the Harvard Uni University, uh, or to be more precise, the GSD, the Graduate Center of uh, Architecture uh, at Harvard in 19... Uh, 65. His book, uh, this, uh, dedicated to the medium, entitled Light Book, which has actually never been published, uh, still, still exists uh, in the form of a manuscript, accompanied with thousands of notes, uh, scribbles, drawings, clippings, and a couple of hundred uh, photographs. Uh, this Archive, Kapesch's archive went to the Stanford, uh, Stanford University very recently, and all the manuscripts uh, which are uh, linked to the so called light book, which was, a never been, uh, which was an unfinished uh, uh, business, uh, could be conducted there at Stanford. Kapesch's courses uh, on visual design, called Visual Fundamentals, at MIT School of Architecture and Planning, offered for architects and designers systematized knowledge concerning both the historical and visual aspects of light. The study, the perceptual form of the city, uh, since a few years also available online, which Kepesh was working uh, on uh, together with Kevin Lynch, was sponsored by a Rockefeller Foundation from uh, 1945 on in order to investigate the psychological impact of the cityscape on the individual. The study was a remarkable design research, the first of its kind. Its outcome was a uh, tremendously huge archive of ur urban areas from the general view of the city up to the uh, tiny detail of the street furniture, sort of a comprehensive uh, vocabulary of our environment. Also, this research served as a ground source for many texts written by Kepesh on pollution, on noise, in which Kepesh worked together with uh, John Cage, actually, and uh, on different uh, psychological factors of the city. Kepesh's contribution to this very project uh, had its origin from his time in Chicago, which uh, just recently received some attention. The art of mimicry, the concealment design, which subject uh, Kepes started to engage with as early as 1941, so during the Second World War, came to head uh, uh, during the war at the School of Design, where he taught in the, in the 30s in Chicago. Uh, the School of Design was the, uh, pre, uh, was the successor of the new Bauhaus. So, uh, there, uh, Kapesh uh, conducted and organized a, a course on camouflage design. The most uh, notable plans uh, sought to de uh, deceive enemy pilots uh, with uh, floating light sources in uh, city parks, artificial islands on Lake Michigan off Chicago, and lights on buoys in the lake that would be uh, imitated the nighttime aerial view of the city. Ke uh, so the basic idea was, was here. Um, to conceal the whole city, the whole, whole, whole Chicago, uh, with uh, light sources. Uh, so uh, when the enemy, the German uh, bombers, would come and attack Chicago, they would, uh, they would think that the lake uh, is Chicago, which uh, um, enlightened by, by light bulbs. 
and uh, because they, uh, they uh, wanted to make uh, a complete blackout in the city, they uh, would think that the city is the lake. So it, it was like a, um, a visual uh, depic depiction uh, how to hide the city uh, from, from, the, uh, from, f from the aerial view. Kepesh's study was also taken up and used by the Army Air Forces of the Federal War Department. However, Kepesh uh, couldn't get, uh, get in, in, uh, deeper, so it was, it was just a visual study. It, was, uh, it has, hasn't been used, actually, um, for the war effort. Um, but uh, more importantly, uh, his seminars, uh, partly on camouflage design, became the starting point of probably the most uh, influential books on the theory of design in the 1940s, Laszlo Mohorinoit's Vision in Motion and Kepesh's own Language of Vision. Based on these, uh, these observations, the paradigm of motion, the reordering and readaptation of human vision, and the function of an image as a bold representation of itself reached a, comp a completely new perspective which manifested in the perce perception of pattern seeing rather than thing seeing. Uh, this image, uh, Kepesh's uh, collaborative uh, lecture with Moholy Night in the uh, front of a copy of uh, Pablo Picasso's Guernica at the Art Institute in, in Chicago is a great example of the social impact uh, and responsibility of the art in the era we are talking about. Um, so Kepesh is marked with uh, the blinking uh, red light on the left side and uh, he's facing uh, towards Laszlo Mohorinaj. Uh, so this uh, image was taken at the Art Institute in, in Chicago and uh, as you know Guernica was also about, uh, uh, so it was, it was a, a key moment of the Spanish uh, Civil War uh, where the, the Nazis uh, uh, attacked this small uh, Basque city of Guernica and they completely de destroyed. So it, it uh, was uh, considered for Capes uh, a, a nice visual symbology or a nice visual representation that he should, uh, as an artist, uh, do something uh, to uh, uh, against, against this, this war effort and uh, to develop tools how uh, catastrophe uh, could be avoided. Uh, now, um, I would like to show you some uh, an other film footage which was just uh, discovered very recently and which uh, demonstrates uh, the end term presentation of Kepesh's class, which was in fact uh, part of the war exhibition of the so called Renaissance Society at the University of Chicago. I should also note that this is probably one of the first school made uh, or educational color uh, documentary film existing in the United States. And this is uh, about uh, Kepesh's class on camouflage design. So these are the, uh, the various experimentation and, uh, and uh, visual uh, tools uh, Kepesh, Kepesh came up with uh, with uh, his students at the School of Design in, in Chicago.
So this is a silent film, so don't accept any, any sound from the speakers. So these uh, were the stud 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 student uh, works uh, at the School of Design, uh, which uh, were also used uh, uh, for this exhibition, War Art, in 1943. And some of these designs were also exhibited uh, as uh, part of a traveling show in the United States first. Uh, displayed or showcased at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So these are like um, educational film um, showing uh, how uh, the techniques of the camouflage uh, could be used uh, in, the, in the war effort. Like they used uh, infrared photography as well. And uh, they were interested in all the elements of the, of the visual pattern, which uh, could be translated to uh, creating camouflage. And of course, the starting point of all these experiments uh, came from the nature, from the uh, animal mimicry, uh, the animal concealment. And uh, those uh, observations were uh, taken up and, and translated to the visual design. The first time uh, they used uh, aerial photographs, so photographs uh, uh, taken from the uh, airplane was in the f f First World War. Actually, uh, during the First World War, um, as uh, uh, the researchers of camouflage uh, technology pointed out, uh, the cubists uh, were asked to make uh, concealments and uh, dazzle painting. So it was called dazzle painting, which were uh, used uh, uh, decoration of uh, various ships. And uh, as the story goes, uh, uh, Pablo Picasso and, uh, and also Marcel Duchamp uh, used uh, this uh, concealment uh, technology during the First World War. And uh, in the Second World War, uh, the surrealists uh, thought that they could uh, benefit uh, something uh, for the camouflage design. There is a very uh, seminal um, ar article by Salvador Dali, who thought that the, his uh, surrealist uh, art and the surrealist art movement uh, probably uh, would be the best suited to, to make uh, camouflage. So this is uh, the poster of uh, this war art exhibition I was referring to, designed by George Kepesh. This, it was in the gallery of uh, the University of Chicago, which was managed by the Renaissance Society. And this was, uh, as far as I know, the first exhibition on, uh, on war design in the, in the Second World War. Over the course of the years, uh, the investigation of the symbolic form of the cityscape remained in Kepesh's uh, focus of interest. For him, the notion of landscape offered a mode of metal organization 
where our natural environment in the realm of constructed imagery could, be, could become our human landscape. According to him, uh, I quote here, if we are to understand the new landscape, we need to touch it with our senses and build images that will make it ours. For this, we must remake our vision. In the study of the various form and manifestation of vision, he learned and gathered many ideas, being also being a recognized exhibition designer. Catherine Koo's gallery of art and representation, uh, art and inter interpretation in Chicago in the early 40s served him as an amazing playground and a fascinating laboratory to conduct research focusing on the actual pieces of the Art Institute. This, I'm almost certain, would be very difficult to carry out today, ever, in a museum. Uh, this is uh, uh, the famous painting by Seurat, the Grand Jatte, uh, which is in the collection of the uh, Art Institute in Chicago. And uh, Kepes wanted to uh, decompose uh, this uh, pointillistic uh, uh, painting, and uh, he started to recreate uh, it uh, as a kind of from uh, its basic elements uh, as like a very Mondrianistic uh, constructivist uh, picture uh, where he used only the color uh, from uh, various pots uh, taken out from the from the uh, from Seurat's uh, painting. Well, uh, Kapesh's paintings, uh, we, sh we shouldn't forget that he was a, a painter by origin which apply a large quantity of various hues and color pigments involving grit and sand laid up in several layers, recall real lens and those uh, existing only in memory, or as he put it, uh, the lost Eden of the eye. The gestures of the surface, on the surface of his canvases evoke the mat materiality of micro and macro structures seen from, uh, seen from perspective of a different degree of reality. This, paintings, uh, this painting, for example, with that uh, detail of a photograph attached or uh, rather glued in the lower right corner, represent the first extra solar source uh, of the X, X uh, radiation supplied by Bruno Rossi, the founder of MIT's Cosmic Ray Group in the late uh, 40s, which became a dominant place for exper experimental particle uh, physics. Being a great uh, friend of Rossi, Kepesh visited uh, this laboratory and uh, their ionization chamber quite frequently, and his discussion, uh, discussions with Rossi offered important leads for him concerning the science-art interaction. Kepesh's public art commissions uh, for schools and libraries, uh, like in Versley. Versley is a small town uh, like 20 miles from Boston in Massachusetts, uh, and also for uh, companies like uh, MetLife or for churches like the St. Mary's uh, Cathedral in San Francisco. Among them, most significantly, his uh, kinetic uh, mural, uh, the New York ticket office of the Dutch Airlines KLM in New York at the Saks Fifth uh, Avenue can be seen as uh, consequent developments of his traditional paintings. Uh, this uh, programmed light wall consisted of about 60,000 fluorescent light sources with built-in timers hidden behind randomly chosen masks. Their placement followed the rule of uh, Peruvian fabrics, the maintenance of rhythmic interplay between a constant and a changing pattern. The nightscape of, of a city, which uh, Kepesh produced uh, for the 14th Milan uh, Triennial uh, in Italy with uh, Thomas McNulty and Mary Uti Stevens in 1968, 
uh, was an advanced version of his New York mural and was based on a computer controlled simulation of light patterns in the nighttime city. A few months before the installation of this kinetic mur mural, Kepesh appointed at, uh, and President Johnson approved the first six artists to be uh, fellows uh, at the newly founded uh, Center for Advanced Visual Studies, which was uh, actually MIT's old uh, bookstore, the so-called technology store at uh, Massachusetts Avenue, with the intention to creating art forms where people could interact with each other and their, their environment. The anti-war protest against Vietnam and uh, nuclear weapons, later concerning the oil crisis, were at, the, uh, at their height and caused much student uh, disobedience and disruption at the very same time when Kepesh just opened their center. The circumstances were not ideal at all, and there was uh, speculation that CIVS uh, was MIT's gesture uh, towards the humanities to focus uh, the attention away from the many Navy and Air Force uh, contracts. A year later, Kepesh asked to be the curator of the, the US uh, entry in the Sao Paulo Biennial, which was uh, withdrawn uh, just before the opening, as most of the part participating American artists were boycotting uh, it uh, to support uh, the, expre the express Washington's disagreement and concerns about the dictatorship of the new Brazilian military regime. When Jack Burnham, one of the earliest fellows, uh, later criticized Kepesh, he accused him that he was only interested in utopian ur ur urban spectaculars, which remained conceptual and couldn't be ever realized because of their cost and oversized scale. At the beginning, uh, the center received some generous support from uh, various foundations, but it had uh, a less efficient uh, ability to extract uh, relatively huge sums of money from the National Endowment uh, for Arts, like uh, Billy Kluver's EAT, the Experiment of Art and uh, Technology, did in New York which was at the very same time assimilated, at least according to the files, almost 6,000 members, reportedly half artists and half engineers. On the other hand, many exhibitions uh, of the early CIVS uh, grew out of profound research and received much attention nationwide. The explorations in 1970 displayed uh, at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. One year after the Dialogue of Senses at the Hartford and the Tactile Gallery, meant for an exhibition for the blinds. Also, the art in civic, uh, civic scale, which mostly incorporated center study on Boston, Boston Harbor and became a source for the later Charles River project involving Lori Burgess listening for light hinge, Marianne Amache's, Louis Frangella's, and Keiko Prince's co-joint work, The Pigeon House, Friedrich St. Florian's imaginary Harvard Bridge, Micho uh, Ihara's uh, reverse walkway, Wen Ying Tsai's cybernetic sculpture, or Kepesh's pro proposal for the sound oasis. The creation of Kepesh's one-man show at the Boston Museum of Science in 1971 plugged in many fellows uh, from uh, the second generation, among other Bill, Par Bill Parker, who helped to assemble the light columns as well uh, as the electromagnetic fields. The latter was probably the first piece in art history which used uh, nanotechnology. 
other words like Kepesh's Flame Orchard, which was accompanied by, accompanied by Paul Earth's electroacoustic music and was first shown at the traveling exhibition Multiple Interactions in 1973. Despite uh, it's not quite museum proof setting, Uh, because it uh, used the uh, uh, gas uh, flames, which gave uh, de uh, definite answers regarding uh, the everlasting question of how it, uh, how it uh, we could humanize technology in a proper way. After Kepesh's retirement, retirement in uh, 1974 and Otto Pina's takeover of the center, the CIVS drifted uh, to a completely different direction. If Kepesh's time was about investigating the earthbound environment we live in, Otto Pina's ideas was to conquer the space just above our head. It is not a coincidence that Kepesh often uh, referred in his writings to Antaeus, the ancient Greek hero, who was uh, indefatigably strong as long as he remained in contact with the ground, his mother Earth, while Otto Pina, Kepesh, uh, as uh, uh, painting uh, one of his uh, so-called abstract landscape uh, painting. So he used actually uh, sand, uh, grids, and earth, uh, which he uh, glued uh, together and put on his uh, canvas. So it, it was like the opposition, uh, Otto Pina's uh, chosen uh, figure, Icarus, from the Greek mythology, someone who wants to eagerly to soar through the sky. The center beam that was a, a, a project uh, by the CIVS for the 1974 Castle uh, Documento. The center beam defined as a multimedia kinetic dragon emer emerging from the resource of technology uh, symbolizing the CAVS participation at the Documento 6 in Kassel and was, was in fact something still in between earth and sky. When Lori Burgess, the fellow who actually designed center beam, wrote a letter to Otto Pina in uh, 1985 entitled Space, he came up with the following concept. And uh, I want to close my talk uh, with this quote. It may be possible to formulate an entirely collaborative effort far surpassing center beam in all its uh, prodigious splendor. The center flight, one extraordinary work which radiates a full domain of possibility. Thank you very much for, for the attention. <laughs>